I love collage in narrative. Maybe it's my Gen X MTV generation attention span. Maybe it's just aesthetic preference, but give me plot shreds, character montages, a shuffled deck of a script, or even a joke. Hopefully, like collage, it all works within a theme, even if the whole thing looks a bit slipshod or messy. Doing these horror shorts episodes are always fun for me because I think horror works so well in short form, like a well-crafted joke, a well-crafted spook or scare is about building the right stack of beats. You have to set up expectations, like young people split up inside an old house or a madman escapes from the asylum. But then you have to confuse us a bit, keep us on our toes. Wait, maybe the madman is misunderstood or the old house isn't haunted at all and one of the young people is doing the killings. Same with humor. We covered Adult Swim's unedited footage of a bear, which layers horror upon comedy upon horror to really rattle our brains. Their earlier short, Too Many Cooks, does the same only with comedy laid upon horror laid upon comedy. It's pure collage, taking existing tropes and pasting them one on top of the other, keeping us guessing the entire way, and it's a fucking joy to watch. Happy Halloween, Cecil. Hey, Jeffrey. Happy Halloween. Thank you. Uh, what Ooh, you was get your, your spooky boo mug? With a little spooky boo mug. I love it. What was your favorite Halloween costume? Oh goodness. Um, I don't know if it was my favorite. Okay, so I have, I have two. When I was a little kid, I was a zebra for like mm. five Halloweens in a row. <laughs> nice. I don't know why. It was just it was easy. Uh, I liked a lot of face paint. Um, it was great. But as a like a little kid, I was definitely a zebra. For quite a few Halloweens. But then in high school, I got my hands on some of that uh, spirit Halloween je blood gel that sort okay. of dry, like, you know, it's like liquid, but then it dries into a gel. And uh, <laughs> I think like my sophomore year of high school, I just took a pencil and, and snapped it in half and then just masking taped the eraser side to my forehead and then just covered it all in that gel. Nice. And it, I thought it was amazing. And it was just like, I just wore normal clothes, but with like a pencil sticking out of my head. And at least one, if not two of my teachers said it was too disgusting. They could not look at me and made me <laughs> sit outside the duration oh, of the wow. class on Halloween. Yeah. Oh, wow. I was that's... banished for my Halloween costume. Oh, that's amazing. I, I've never really done I I've always liked Halloween. I've never been the dress up for Halloween person. Yeah. I think as a kid, as a young kid in the 80s, and maybe they still have this, I don't know, but it, like at the grocery store, you could just buy kind of like a prefab, oh, sure. like plastic bag with Superman's yep. chest on it and the yeah, little it was plastic essentially mask. like a yeah, it was like a little plastic mask and then like pajamas yes. in a character. Uh-huh. So that was always kind of my shortcut. Although I do remember one time. My best friend Nick and I were doing, we were in Boy Scouts together and they did like a Halloween thing. And Nick's, Nick wanted to get these costumes that his mom was like, you guys should both dress up in these costumes. And we like rented like actual costumes of oh, wow. he, I was a tiger. Ooh. I think I was the tiger and Nick was like the rhino or something anyways, but it was like a full body, like actual fur. Oh, wow. That was kind of fun. Um, yeah, so that was always nice, but I, yeah, I was very self-conscious about asking my mom to spend money on something like that. So I never, that's fair. Never did. I just, you know, put on the cheapest Halloween costume and got free candy. That's how we did it. I think, I think that was why the zebra costume was so popular. My parents were like black and white face paint done. <laughs> put on this black and white t-shirt. Here you go. We didn't really get much of a Halloween vibe from these horror shorts that we randomly drew from suggestions from our Patreon. But, you know, spooky season is spooky season. Absolutely. I, I like this. I like this sort of uh, five card spread that we had going on here. I did. too. I did, too. This is this is really nice. Um, yeah. So we have five horror shorts that we did. We have Slut. Followed by Home Invasion Help from Gemini Home Entertainment. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. We have an animated poetry sequence called There's a Man in the Woods. Uh, we have a super short oldie called Tea Time. And, of course, Adult Swim's Too Many Cooks to finish it yeah. out. So let's start with Sloot. Yes. 
<laughs> so, the um, end. The end. Have a good night, everybody. Uh, slut is, uh, I you know, I think the most like classic, uh, classically structured, just kind of like horror oh, yeah. film. Yeah, yeah. What a great film. Mm -hmm. Like, like you know, I think it it said it was uh, American Film Institute mm -hmm. um, produced. Like, how awesome was this? Or at least endorsed by the American Film Institute. Yeah, it might um, have been distributed. I haven't. I don't yeah, know the history like of this film, but yeah, it's uh, it's so well done, super well crafted. It's very simple. It's like a perfect like eighteen minutes long. That's exactly the story it has to tell, and it uses that eighteen minutes. I think perfectly. Yeah. So we've got young Maddie. Uh, I'm gonna we're gonna assume high schooler in what looks to be like a small like California or Nevada, yeah, Northern Colorado. California. Yeah, maybe Arizona, something like that. Uh, she lives at home in a pretty isolated house. Yeah, with her grandmother, who is in a wheelchair, on oxygen. Her grandmother doesn't ever speak in this short. She just hunches over and watches TV, and Maddie she, is in yeah, charge of she, her. She loves her Wheel of Fortune. Mm -hmm. And Maddie is your your classic trope of, well, I can't. She's obviously hideous because she doesn't wear strong makeup, or yeah. and she keeps her glasses on. She has so glasses like, and and slightly homemade looking clothing. This super beautiful actress isn't fooling anybody. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. But she is – it's less about her being ugly and more about her being an outsider, right? Yeah. Like that she doesn't get to socialize because she's stuck at home. Yeah. And she tries going to the skate rink, which is where all the kids in this whatever small-ass town hang out. I, I love the 80s vibes of this, mm -hmm. this film. Like it really kind of got the like dingy pastel – ness of the 80s yeah yeah it, it's never exactly clear when it takes place but 80s from the fashion and the type of yeah. tv we have make a lot of sense the type yeah. of truck our strange. i was drives. like the wheel of fortune is on at night yeah so and it seemed like the old school version of wheel of fortune uh-huh so she uh maddie goes to the skate rink uh she's trying to make eyes at boys but they are too busy staring at blondie yeah whose name i don't think we learn i don't know but there's just a hot blondie lady skating around i just love the way that like we're introduced to blondie she's mm -hmm. she it's just like she's skating to the camera and she's just got that glide of just like everyone is looking at me and i know it and i love it She's got that like Farrah Fawcett hair. Oh, it's feathered like the most majestic eagle. Yes. So good. But like such an introduction because, you know, we see Maddie doing her chores at home, chopping wood, which will come in handy later, um, taking care of grandmother. And so this is just a stark difference of someone mm -hmm. who's just carefree. Yeah. She's out to see and be seen. Mm -hmm. So the uh, Maddie you know kind of tries to look look at these two boys that are ogling blondie and maddie you know tries to make eyes at them but they just kind of like turn their heads and laugh uh very mean boy sort of thing yeah well she gets out there and starts trying to skate and it's very clear she doesn't hang out at the skate rink because she yeah. cannot skate and she's doing i love the two hands on the wall kind oh of my pulling God, yourself the along best. the best because we've all been there, girl. Yeah. Yeah, that's me ice skating the one time I went ice skating. So she, uh, you know, and the boys start making comment. Like, you know what's actually kind of cool about freaky chicks like that is they like to do it weird. They'll do anything. Ugh. So Kyle, you don't even know what you want. It's such a such a great setup because we we know the world is kind of against her, right? Like fate has put her in charge of her grandmother in an isolated part of town. She gets there. She can't match up to the hot girl that everyone loves who uh, doesn't even know her name. She's like, Hey Mindy, it's Maddie. it's Maddie. And, and then even the boys don't really acknowledge her only to just objectify her and yeah. be gross about it. So when she, when Maddie wipes out, a man comes along to help her up. I know. 
and his members Which only jacket like, like cowboy boots on the skating rink oh mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. you know he's a bad guy because that is against the rules yep also he tries to like light up a cigarette in the <laughs> yeah but he um so we we now have the as we'll find out he is the baddie but in the moment he feels so like thank god somebody here is being kind yeah like he picks up maddie's glasses for her he's like you're a nice girl yeah you're a nice girl you seem like a nice girl and she's like you must be new here and he's like how could you tell she's like because i know every single person in this stupid fucking town Uh uh-huh unfortunately while looking at hot girl Mm mm-hmm and he tells her, I think you're better than them. And I think you're better than her. Why? Because you're a nice girl. And this is where she's like, oh, I don't think you can smoke in here. And he goes, see, you're a nice girl. And walks out. So when she leaves, when Maddie leaves uh, at dusk, she looks over and sees Stranger having a smoke. And she's like, oh, hey. And he just kind of nods. He's not as yeah warm this time. And then... Blondie pops out and is like, oh, hey, to him. I only said I would just be a minute. Sorry. You want to get out of here? And he's like, wow, we're going to have to teach you how to tell time. Do you want to slap my wrist? Sure. Oh, you're so like, actually kind of like hits her wrist pretty hard. Real like, hard. Ow. Oh, no. You're so bad. And obviously, Maddie is gravely disappointed. Yeah. In this. Crestfallen. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect word. So at home, it's just grandma just watching TV and Maddie is upstairs in her room. This house is falling apart. Yeah, There's a moment where she's dancing and you see like you can see the floorboards like straining. Yeah. (laughs) And and then cut to like plaster falling down on top of grandma's head. Uh Uh-huh. Unaware of this. But Maddie's doing her, you know, doing the the. The trope of the young woman in the high school comedy about what, what's the I forget the names of all these. All that? I think she's all that, and there's that she a few the others. And she's like, "Look, I'm pretty." But isn't that like isn't that from like I can't remember where the original like "Look, Mama, I'm pretty." What movie is that? Is it Pollyanna? It's not Pollyanna. Something I, yeah, like I can't that. Remember? It's like a really like Disney, like early like seventies eighties movie. Yeah, yeah. Like, girl takes her hair down, shakes it out, like, look, mama, I'm pretty. I just, um, <laughs> watching this when she takes off her glasses and then puts on her lipstick, and she has to lean really close to the oh mirror to God, truly I see know. herself, because her eyes are so bad. And, th- you know, this nice music is playing, and it's kind of slowed down a little bit, and so it's, you know, oh, she's beautiful now. I'm like, girl, you're not fooling anyone. <laughs> like, you're <laughs> same pretty. Uh, but she's, the thing is, is that she's trying to communicate pretty better yeah. right like that's what she's trying to do and she's kind of dancing to herself dancing with herself upstairs and then we cut to the middle of fucking nowhere at night a desert scene just lit by headlights from an old pickup truck and blondie is laying in the dirt yeah just kind of um flailing in the dirt uh-huh. I-, I like the fact that we don't see the initial act of violence yeah, like the lead up to it, it's like we're we're sort of like oh we have to put the pieces together in this moment. I mean we all know the second we see this image, which is why I think it's such a strong, um, uh, f- a piece of filmmaking. Yeah, but I really like that choice that we don't see the lead up. We we just we kind of we just see the the stranger and the hot girl walking off together. Next thing we know she is flailing on the ground. Yeah, we, we know what happened. Yeah. I like that this is the gr- a great use of a wide shot, a yeah. super, super wide shot where you see the whole truck, which is 20 feet from her. You see everything in the single shot. Uh, and it's just that patch of light from the headlights. And, you know, he comes up to her and he says, you know, it's the end of the line, darling. He said, you know, half of the fun is the chase and girls like you make it too damn easy. Ew. And he says, you want to go for another ride? And he gets back in the truck and we realize her ankles are tied to the truck's bumper. Yeah. And the last thing we see of her is an overhead shot of her laying face down in the dirt and 
she just gets pulled off screen. And I love that we could like see the individual finger marks in yeah. the dirt. Mm-hmm. Again, just like really like, and again, it's like short images, short scenes like this really come to fruition. Like it's it suggested the horror, the violence of it. I mean, we're going to get, you know, kind of a showdown scene at the end of this film, but you know, this is where like, I, I think strong images like that are so amazing. Yeah. Well, it's like your um your your pencil in the forehead costume. It's yeah. not super graphic, but it implies like I'm imagining you didn't do a whole bunch of crazy blood work and like part of your brain is open and exposed. No. It's just simply a pencil stuck into your forehead that looks like it's lodged in there and it freaks these fucking teachers out. Yeah. And it's the same thing here. This is a really disturbing moment. We see no blood, we see no assault. I mean, no like you know he's not yeah, stabbing yeah, yeah. her shooting yeah. her and uh but just that brief instance of her getting dragged off you can only imagine what's happening here yeah okay so now we've got maddie making she's gonna make some jorts she's oh gonna my do god this scene off. is so great she's like laying out the jeans on her bed mm-hmm. she's got the scissors and she's gonna cut she's like no wait and she just moves those scissors up about five uh-huh. inches. Yep. Like, I'm going to be a hot girl. Yeah. My jean shorts. My uh-huh. booty shorts. And so she does. She makes her very short cutoff jorts. And she puts on. It's almost the same sort of outfit other than the top now. The bl- the kind of It's kind of that 80s puffy blouse. But this one's slightly lower cut. And it's yeah. pink instead of white. What I think it's interesting is that it's the same material that the grandmother's, it's that pink gingham that the grandmother's oh, uh-huh. night dress is made out of, which oh. one says a lot about she's, she's stretching a dollar, mm-hmm. you know, they probably have this, you know, you all know the pink gingham that you can get by the bolts. It's like the cheapest fabric, but she's like, okay, I'm going to make her like I'm gonna make my version of a hot girl dress, and it and it's it's very country western. Mm-hmm. It's very frilly. It's very you know kind of Barbara Mandrell. Yeah, it is. It is the it's it's a very mild Daisy Duke. Yes, yes. It's a Daisy Duchess. <laughs> she pops into the skating rink, and people are all staring at her now. Yeah. And she becomes overwhelmed by this and just darts back out and ends up just kind of taking some breath standing yeah. up on the outside of the building. And one of the bros from earlier sees her and he walks out to go talk to her. He like stands like 10 feet away, mm-hmm. looks at her and goes, hey, she says, hey. fuck off. <laughs> I love it. That was my one thing. If this movie was the 80s, I feel like the language was a little bit forward. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I feel like cursing wasn't as prevalent in the 80s as it is today. Maybe this is just like looking back, but I feel like language was a little bit softer in the 80s. Yeah, maybe so. To curse in the 80s was like a definitive move. And I felt like this was the one thing written in the script where she was like, fuck off. I was like... This girl, Maddie, would never say fuck. No. You know? No. No, I agree. Well, he lights up a smoke, offers one to her. She takes it. They're standing still kind of far away, and eventually he drops his cigarette, walks over to her, and leans in for the kiss. It's like a beautiful use of split screen here. Yes. Because it's like we get... The left, the left side of the screen is, uh, we just see like the the mid shot of the guy, but it's like his crotch. Like we see essentially him holding his cigarette at crotch level, like this, like this phallic symbol, literally. Uh-huh. And then the right hand side of the screen is Maddie's face, and then we sort of see the kiss happen from, a, you know, like the left hand side. The left hand side is the couple but the right hand side is still on maddie's face yes so it has a like it's great because it it sees the experience from afar but also the experience from 
like not from her point of view, but we get to see her experience the moment. Yes. So it's a little bit pointed, but also objective. Yeah. And he, of course, takes off her glasses mm -hmm. to lean in for the kiss, drops them to the ground. And then as he steps in to make out more, he accidentally steps on her glasses. He says, oh, I'm sorry. And she says, I'm not. And, she and puts then they her, his out. hand on her boob. Uh-huh. And this, like, six foot three dude is trying to kiss all up on her. And she looks so happy. I love this scene because there is a... It's a moment of connection for her. Yeah. We already set up this guy is kind of douchey, broy, but he's not a bad guy, this no. kid. He just is he's a, a townie. He's, he's a townie. A townie. <laughs> but I think it so perfectly captures that, like, her face so captures that need as, like, a 16-year-old yeah. or whatever to want to connect to somebody yeah. intimately. And then the excitement you feel, even though everything about it as an adult, you know, this kid's a bad idea. Yeah. But it's I mean, a it's good idea a, at the yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, th this is, listen, small towns, yeah. you get what you get. <laughs> you do. And he's not bad looking and he seems he's pretty right. gentle with her here. And I, But uh, the six foot three frame to her like five foot four is great. Yeah. But, but. from the truck... We can from the we see the stranger watching this whole thing happen. Mm -mm. And then, yeah, and then later he goes to pick up her glasses. Yeah, after the two of them have gone off to do the sex, mm -hmm. to do it, they're gonna go do it. They're gonna <laughs> do it for their country. What what's our eighties to pork? He's he's going to pork. pork. Yeah, yeah, that, that was very like eighties term. They're gonna go pork porking. Good lord. Okay, so Maddie gets home, sans glasses, and mm -hmm. her grandmother's still sitting there the, watching TV. But we get a shot from Maddie's point of view looking at her grandmother without her glasses on. Grandmother's very blurry. We can't yes. quite make out grandmother uh -huh. here. But, you know, and grandmother's, she's... you know, grandmother doesn't do much. She just watches TV and, you know. Yeah. Into her stories. And... She says, oh, here's a great 80s joke. Oh, yes. Guess what? Chicken butt. Oh, my God. No, just kidding. Uh, no, just kidding. I had sex. <laughs> it's so random. So like, good. But it's still, you get the idea that grandmother doesn't, you know, grandmother's completely non-responsive. And so Maddie really just spends her time. Like, I think this is, it's a funny line, but it really is very illuminating. Like, it kind of gives us some backstory mm -hmm. that Maddie is kind of on her own. Like, she, if she can say, I had sex to her grandmother, she knows that grandmother doesn't hear, doesn't acknowledge, doesn't listen. Grandmother's, you know, but it, that really tells us something about Maddie's isolation in the world. Right, right. So she, you know, she's like, well, you know, watching TV... Watching TV all day brought your brain. I would tell you that, Grandma, but I guess it doesn't matter. It's kind yeah. of a thing. And so she goes up to go to bed, but then here's footsteps coming up the stairs in the dark, which doesn't make sense with a wheelchair-bound grandmother. Oh, my God. Well, this is this is such a scary shot because, like, Maddie goes upstairs, mm -hmm. and the camera stays kind of a, another wide shot on the living room. Yeah. And Grandma gets up. Uh-huh. And it's still far enough away that we can't see. I mean, we know who it is. I mean, this is clearly like it's literally Little Red Riding Hood with like a yeah. wolf in grandmother's clothing. Yes, absolutely. Which I think is such a wonderful, like it. it's not trying to be like, look, we're doing a Little Red Riding. But it is. And I think it's just a wonderful, just subtle, perfectly yes. subtle. Agreed. And uh, she hears this noise, turns on her light. She also notices there is a bloodstained rope tied to the foot of her bed. That's fucked up. That's real fucked up, like a lasso type rope. Yeah. And when she peers out the door, he just decks the shit out of her with the axe. He's got her axe. And he decks the shit out of her with the axe handle. And he hog ties her, just like he did Blondie. And he pins her down, squats on top of her, and puts her glasses back on her face and says, 
I liked you better with your glasses. Oof. Oof. Gross. And she what tries can... to bargain her way out, being like, please yeah. don't kill me. Oh, well, what kind of things can I do to you? And she's like, sex things? Sex things? And he says, oh, and I thought you were a nice girl. Eek. And he starts to choke her. Yeah. And she, again, love the classic trope of somebody pinned down dying, but they look over and something's just out of reach. And if yeah. I could just get the lipstick, she grabs the lipstick and just won't that tube right into his eye. What wild, what a wild choice of weapon. Uh-huh. I mean, for a, for a short film entitled Slut, you know, it's like, I mean, it's a pretty loaded image. The idea that, you know, this idea of her awakening her sexuality of wearing the short shorts of wearing the lipstick is the thing that turns the killer against her but it's also her weapon yes and also the way it leaves a mark around his eye too it gives a it's, pink eye yeah it gives him a pink eye and um you know he's he's like girl you got some fight in you but he does think he has her cornered one thing though that happened during the sequence when they kind of wrestled up to get when she got herself up she took that rope off of her feet yeah and then threw it around him and so he's got this rope hanging around his neck but he's uh -oh. like i got you cornered and as he steps forward his foot goes through the floorboard and he gets trapped the axe is sitting right there on the table. Yeah. She grabs it, and we saw her expertise with that axe earlier. As she's, she should have a TikTok account the way she slaps that wood. Yes, and, and we think she's going to go for the head, which would totally make sense. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't. She doesn't, and she she fucking misses. She swings with all of her might and misses. And the look on this man's face is like, "You fucking missed." Yeah. Oh, poor baby. And as he starts to lunge at her, the floorboard finally gives way, and he just drops through and hung. Love it. I love it. It's, I, I, it's so perfect because there's a, one, I like the uh, battling our expectations that, oh, it's the axe. We, we know she's good with the axe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not as, I don't think, nearly as strong a choice as the house Yes. The house saving her or that it's because it's not just like deus ex machina. It's not like the house came out of nowhere. We know the house is falling apart and the house is a thing that she's that's just, this. The house is her. She, she knows is the house. it intimately. She knows yeah. that those floorboards creak. She knows yeah. the paint is peeling. Or yeah. The wallpaper's peeling. And it is her own upbringing that saves her. You know, it is this she is left a, like without parents, it seems. Yeah. Just like a teenager raising a, an old woman with dementia and health issues yeah. and all of that. And and the house falls apart around her because of this. Because the fuck am I supposed to do? Yeah. Anyways, she uh, we get one more when she goes down to inspect his body. We get one more like uh, lunge Just at her. Yeah. But we're done. And she hears grandmother in the other room. He didn't kill grandmother. She gets grandmother back in the wheelchair. Rope. Pull, brings her out to the living room. Is like, um, grandmother, let me get your let me get your meds, okay? And grandmother just rolls off, goes to the TV, turns it on. What a great and it's like kind of the last image of the short is uh -huh. like, uh, like grandmother watching TV, the body hanging from the ceiling, uh -huh. and Maddie watching TV slash just like in a moment of stillness. Incredible, just like a perfect left to right. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, freeze yeah the end no notes love it great let's talk about home invasion help oh no you want to talk about 80s scary uh-huh as soon as this thing started i was like why is vhs video so terrifying what is it about that distortion that like you know video distortion that is so fucking scary it's like the warping of sound the mm -hmm. the 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 video grain of it is yeah. so scary we watched one on the last year for one of our horror shorts episodes uh 
channel 58 or something i forget the name of the the, the channel that did it but it, it also had this analog horror yeah. and it was done like a community calendar on cable yes. access yes and this one kind of starts out a little bit similarly it has that same type of like mellow yeah. midi keyboard music yep well, this it's, this feels very like is like in the wires territory. Yeah, it really, yeah, it it really it really is, and it's um, I think what's scary and unnerving about that aesthetic on video video is that it's, I think it's the same way in which like people putting on unnatural voices is scary. Mm -hmm. Um, way the way robot voices can be scary because. Yeah it feels like something not human talking to us yes and something not human pretending to be human is very scary and this feels inhuman from the get-go from the get-go it's also it's that like corporate nice and you know it's like home invasion help and safety it's, it's a yes help and safety like it's anybody who's ever had to watch a training video especially of the sort of 80s variety there's like a very sanitized for your protection you know that this was made by people somewhere in mm -hmm. some studio but it feels other it it really does because even for vhs era looks it's it's a very phony kind of image yeah. right it, it feels like it, hold on let me let, let me let cop go on to wherever he's going it feels so two-dimensional. Yes. And I know video is two-dimensional, but like it feels two-dimensional. There's yeah. like no depth to the scene. This house feels like a cutout almost. It just yeah. the backdrop Flat is the house. Lighting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we see home invasion, help and safety. And then other text comes up on the screen. And it's immediately kind of puts you on your heels because it says, you know, home invasion can be a daunting and stressful project to take upon yourself you're, like, and you're like wait oh oh i thought you were going to give us help and safety to prevent home mm, oh no we're giving instructions yeah love it and it's so subtle in the text it's very subtle which i love especially where this is going to go and it's only a five and a half minute short yeah but even to like delay that pleasure a little bit it's it's it doesn't like lay it all out there in the very beginning but in no. those first four or five title cards you they're like lights lights can sometimes prevent home invasion even before the home invasion can begins yeah creaking doors and windows uh-huh but it's still worded just enough and and it does say like alarms and cameras can be disabled by blunt force and uh -huh. there's still a question of like who is this directed to yes exactly but then it says common entrant entry styles and we get three entry styles and it yes. says breaking a window okay. can be the most direct form of entrance although it can alert the prey that you're there now mm -hmm. we're like oh, like, oh okay. okay well now Here i know who you're talking to but uh, doors okay knocking making on a door yeah knocking you can... doors making a noise can be a way to get the 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 prey to move towards that door mm -hmm. but it's the third one that really takes us into the second act of this short film <laughs> burrowing into the house from below and you're like okay sure yeah i've seen that in a couple horror movies you come in from the floorboards but it also says burrowing in from below is a way to travel between nests yes i was like nests <laughs> what uh-uh <gasps> Uh -uh. Do not like that. Nope, 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 nope. And then we get but this. But that perfectly sets up the like, because, you know, we're thinking home invasion. Psycho killer. Here sure. we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So it's a video for psycho killer home, but nests. I don't think psycho. I mean, you could, but like what a loaded word. Yeah. Because it implies either vampires have nests, but mostly insectoid. Mm-hmm alien other other humany kind of things yes and then this this that we get a visual tonal shift here when we get yes. to the instructions on what to do upon entering because now 
we've just got a black screen with kind of a like a mutating face looking thing in white yeah yeah it's like it's, it's, it's like when you, it's yeah. like it's like all in the dark and it's like when you look at like like looking at like a mannequin but like squinting your eyes so it has that blur to it mm -hmm. but it's also highly digitalized mm -hmm. as well well here's what to do upon entering cecil Step one, one locate prey great two incapacitate prey sure three enter prey via proboscis wait hold up <laughs> like me <laughs> I love this shift because, you know, we started with, oh, were they going to help us prevent home invasion? Oh, no, we're instructing psycho killers on home invasion. Now we are 100% sure we are dealing with another being. Yes. And then our final act of this short is we get actual video now. Video camera, flashlight, point of view, found footage Classic. sort of thing of a person we or, hear their footsteps. Yeah, yeah. And they're breaking into this home at night that we've seen pictured in the backdrop earlier. Yeah. And such, again, flashlight through darkened rooms. Oh, God, what? And especially on video, because mm. it like you like the video can't pick up the contrast. Yeah. When it's that dark. Yeah. So, oh, it's just like, you're just trying to, and, and the choreography is here is really great. Like it's, it's sort of a sweeping flashlight, but then every once in a while it'll like turn to a dark corner and uh -huh. expecting something to be there, but there's nothing there. Yeah. Until we get to a shot that literally it took me like half a minute to realize what the fuck I was looking at. It looks like, um, a person made of yarn. Yes. I wrote like red vines. Red vines, yes. And you're like, is that what I think it is? But what is it? it and it kind of like slowly goes up and down this person. And you realize it's like a circulatory system mm -hmm. of a human figure. But we don't stay there. We just no. get enough, just enough time to be like, oh, what? What is that? Oh, mm -hmm. oh. And then it kind of the kind zoom of... in on that thing's face too. I'm just ready for that thing to leap right oh, through the screen at me. Oh yeah, yeah. And then it kind of cuts over to the stairwell, and the stairwell also has these kind of like it, they weren't sea monkeys, but it's like when you had a terrarium or like an aquarium, and like like you didn't clean the water for a long time, and those like long tendrils of like bacteria or whatever would build up. Mm -hmm. it looks like that so it's not just people it's just like this house is like infected with something yes and i'm under the impression that whatever these beings are are the ones that have followed the instructions of home yes. invasion help that yeah. have entered prey through the proboscis uh-huh and then coincidentally we have a B and E person, human, yeah. who's oh, broken sure. into the wrong fucking house. Yeah. And so he he sees something we don't see, and then, or maybe he's just reacting to the red vines hanging from the, the yeah. banister, but he starts running. And there's clomp, 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 clomp. And it's clomp, like, clomp. and it's like it like something passes in front of the light. So it's almost like a little shadow play. And it looks like a giant spider or like yeah. giant legs yes and the next thing we know we just see the camera hit the floor camera kind of lying on the floor and then a human body hit the floor and then yeah that thing leaps upon and the end the end so fucking freaky so freaky fucking loved it i also love that they have like an end card for like the gemini yes logo so gemini it's like home entertainment <laughs> You know, because in, in things like this of sort of the suspension of disbelief that you're like, oh, we've, like, it's kind of what we're talking about when we watched um, uh, uh, Neroy the Grudge about like, you know, capturing things on found footage. There's uh -huh. always some disconnect of like, how did you get this on this found footage thing? Yeah. And this takes that and then and doubles with it. And it's like, no, 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 we intended all this. Here's the, here's the title. Here's the end card. Yes. This is supposed to be here. Yeah.
Uh, so good, so excellent. Let's talk about There's a Man in the Woods. Ooh, what a great tonal shift. I love animation. Mm -hmm. The animation's great. I love the choice to have it be in poetry. You got some some verse going on here. Yeah, and it's also like, and it's not like Susian poetry, right? No, but it's, it's not it's children's rhyming. book. It, it is rhyming, It's but it's a complicated internal rhyme meets freeform. It feels more like poetry slam. A bit, kind yeah. of Kind of vibe. Like it's a free-flowing story. Yeah. It is also in the way that like performance poetry can be similar to music, uh, like especially in hip hop and country music and folk music, typically use the I'm going to do a first person story about yes. me as a yeah. character. Yes. And so using that first person kind of uh, storytelling, I really love that. I love performance poetry. I love this yeah. type of like character work that happens in poetry. And that's what this poem that story is doing is animating a sequence about there's a man in the woods the first line of this poem and we meet our teacher our unnamed mm -hmm. teacher our narrator leaving his small apartment to get into his small car he's a he teaches young kids we're gonna guess like first or second graders maybe yeah. and he says he's in his prime I'm he in my loves prime. being a teacher mm-hmm and everything about it is good. He's so good with the kids. And this is only him telling us how good he is with the kids. But then one day it started with Sid, that nasty Sid. little boy, who started a rumor about there's a man in the woods. There's no man in the woods. But the Sid starts telling kids and the kids all get scared. And now they start seeing him everywhere. And they've built a legend of a man with the, yeah. in the woods who's got a shotgun or an axe or He's got pointy ears and red eyes and a mask. And I love it. Like the kids are seeing and it, like, what a great, it, it, this, this one happens really, this is only a three and a half minutes, which mm -hmm. it's anim animated. So like three and a half minutes animated is a, a work. That yes. is a lot of work goes into this, but it's, it's very quick. Mm -hmm. Which if I have to say, there's one critique I had of this. It's naturally as, as a voice actor, it's for the performance of the I like I wish it had slowed down a little bit. Yes. Because the verse is hard, like it it kind of it sped up at places where I was like, oh no, I'm, I'm I feel like I'm missing things. And I know from performing Shakespeare, there's like your ear needs a little bit of time to adjust to hearing verse as mm -hmm. opposed to prose. And I think it there were some things that were rushed through. That's my only critique of this one. It, this is, it's it's a really odd thing. I've watched this a couple of times now and from, you know, my limited experience, but my love of performance poetry is that they're performing for poetry, right? It's yes. sort of like, it, it, it's basically a musical essentially yeah. where the, the oh, voice sure. acting in it isn't acting a character. It is, it is it's not, singing it's not the character. It's not theatrical. It's more, um, yeah, like you said, it's, it's more about, the poetry of it it's musical without orchestration and yeah. beat you know but but it is sort of music so it's it's keeping to the verse rather yeah. than the character but you're right like it does he's creating with the voice work he's just creating a steadier and steadier tension i mean the yes. theme of this is pent-up rage yeah it is entitlement it is uh it is the way in which violence happens within us, especially young men who believe a lot in themselves yeah. and believe they are owed something. Well, he, because the kids all are scared of the man in the woods, all the parents start freaking out about the man in the woods and what is being done about the killer in the woods. Why are you not protecting him? And he's being called in by his principal and the parents, and they all believe that he's not doing enough and he gets fired. Yeah. And, he, you know, and he takes this not as, he takes this as a victim who will fight back. Yeah. Your precious little angels could never lie, right? But uh, he's coping with uh, definitely booze and yeah. drugs. <laughs> yeah. I like that he talks about, I think it's, he's talking about 
all the lines that these kids tell, the lies these kids tell. He's like lie after lie and line after line. And when he says line after line, it's a shot of him doing cocaine. Yeah, from doing the point a of line view. of cocaine. Yeah. And uh, and he says, well, I can play along too. There is a man in the woods. And we, <laughs> there's, he is ready to fucking go. And I'm guessing the implication here is that He's going to take some violent revenge. Yeah. Um, it's intense, man. Yeah. It's fucking fucking intense. But I do I do appreciate as a form of horror of not, you know, we just talk about the building of a hero, or I'm sorry, yeah. building of of a villain, of a super villain, rather than having a thing about a, a I feel like an animated story about a former teacher killing kids or parents would have been really fucking hard to watch. Like, not yeah. in a scary way, but in an upsetting way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that is the end of The Man in the Woods. Uh, there's a man in the woods, and I, I highly encourage it just for the performance poetry aspect of this. Is really uh, what a pleasant surprise. I was not expecting that. See, so let's talk about tea time. Oh, yes, let's. I think this is from like 06 when this was po like posted yeah, to so. YouTube. 07, yeah. 07. It, very early YouTube then because yeah. I think YouTube started in 04, 05. Oh, wow. Anyways, very early YouTube posting. Another three-minute clip. Super short. Super shorty. Got an old woman. She. It, this looks very English kitchen. Like this kind of the small yeah. kitchen home. It's just old everything about it is yeah. just kind of like an old again very, old. we're getting kind of 80s vibes everything's you know sort of that, that like pukey yellow uh -huh. you know yep. baby blanket faded yellow jaundiced yellow well it might be irish then i just remember sarah griffin pointing out that yellow color is so popular oh, in old irish God. homes yeah so there's no so dialogue making tea nope yeah ladies put a kettle on to mm -hmm. boil and she's uh, she she puts some food out for the cat, but mm -hmm. the food bowl is kind of overflowing already, and she does seem a little maybe distracted or just you know she's but she's not she's just going through the routine of making some tea, putting yeah. out food for the cat, yeah, and uh, putting out two two cups of tea yeah. one for and her very, one like, for i love it she's partner. like very you know place the spoon in the perfect place place the the handle of the mug in the perfect place and then she no one is across from her for tea and she walks over into the bathroom and she looks at herself she's kind of smiling and her smile is slowly dropping and i can't i don't recall whether or not it the camera lens changes focus to let us see this or i just noticed this in the length of time she's in the mirror but you can see blood splatter on the wall behind her just yeah. a little bit of it just a little bit and then we get a wide shot looking into the bathroom and there are just two legs sticking out of the bathtub uh -oh. with blood and then she looks into the bathtub and there is a man in there with a knife Fully into his shoulder blade, like like yeah, like right or at not the, the base shoulder of blade, the collarbone, neck. yeah, yeah. And it's and it's this is like you know at going from the first minute and a half or whatever two minutes that is so kind of pastel. Her her dress is like light blue and flowers. This red looks so red. Yes, yes, great, beautiful color story. Jump scare tea kettle goes off. Yep. And she pours tea for two and just kind of sighs and looks around. Really great device. Like taking, like, I see where we're going with all this. This is all yeah. very cool. Like, oh, the, here's the twist. Makes sense. She killed her husband. She's sitting out there. He's not yeah. going to come to tea. But we get, like, these jagged, like, little flashes of a man crawling across the floor. Yeah. But he's, like, there for half a, a quarter of a second. Yeah, like, it's like a frame's worth of a person. Yeah. But it's, it's done sporadically enough and it has this like is it a ghost is it her imagination uh-huh and he you know makes his way to the table we see his hands on the tablecloth smearing blood across it and the last thing we see is that flickery lunging at her 
arms outstretched, but nothing happens. And then she stands up. And you know what? Tea's done. <gasps> she kind of sighs. <sighs> she gets out her, her yellow cleaning washing gloves. Mm -hmm. And her saw. Yeah, under the sink. She. I'm thinking she's about to pull out some, like, woolite or something. Yeah. And she pulls out a fucking hacksaw. Oh. And we see at the and she kind of walks away. She's like, oh, well, she's gotta get take care of business. And we see a black cat inside a plastic bag with its mouth open. Oh. And that's the last shot of the short. I love that last shot of the cat one because it's it's funny and brutal and sad, but also it answers the question of it doesn't fully answer the question, but like there, there is some question. But of yeah, like, a question he, is asked. What, like, why is she putting extra food in the bowl? Like, yeah. it seems such an unusual thing. Anybody, like, this is this is giving me very David Lynch, Twin yeah. Peaks inspired. Like the the normalcy of suburban Western life gone wrong. Yes. Like, well, I feed the cat every day when I make the tea, but. The cat's not eating the food. Why is the cat not eating the food? Why are you still feeding a cat yeah. that's not eating the food? What happened to the cat? And that question is answered in the last shot of the short. And it also like limits, it starts like narrowing our scope of what happened too. Yeah. Because if the cat was not at the beginning, we're like, maybe her husband's dead and her cat is dead. And she just is like... Just dementia yeah. doesn't know yeah. Yeah. who who knows what's happening it's like in well, a fugue we, state kind of thing well we know she killed her husband and so it might be there's kind of a a determined satisfaction on her face to it like she doesn't look happy but she looks like you know let's just move on with life yeah. and that may started to imply to me of like oh he might have he might have had it coming yeah do you know what i mean like he yeah he had it coming he had it coming mm -hmm. he uh did he kill the cat yeah, did, did he kill the cat? Did he the, like it's it's but the fact like, that the cat is wrapped up so neatly? She killed that cat. Oh. He's not killing that cat. Like he he is not there's I don't think. I mean, I I'm I'm genderizing it a little bit, Maybe. but I don't think he is that carefully killing the cat. Like it to me it's on her. To me it was well, it's like he might well I I was thinking he killed the cat and then she oh, like him. wraps it up. To uh -huh. keep things neat and tidy, kills him. Oh, see, but honestly, and like this could again left to interpretation. I love it. Well, speaking of left to interpretation, let's talk about too many cooks. Too many cooks. Um, I there's a moment I gotta there's a moment where Night Vale was on tour, uh huh, and we had just done a really amazing San Francisco show, uh huh, um, and after the show, we all walked up to the park where the full house house is. Uh -huh. And we got food and we got some booze and we had a lovely like hang. And listen, if you are of an age where you grew up with full house, family matters, um, any of these TV shows that are sort of spoofed in too many cooks. Uh-huh. This video hits so hard. It absolutely does. Yeah. Uh Valerie, I remember watching that oh with my Jason, God. Jason Bateman. Right. And yeah. Um the thing like hits when, it when TV so perfectly. shows had like catchy theme songs, family uh -huh. ties, yeah. you know, like that era of TV making is so specific and so ludicrous because it's kind of the last gasp. Before the 2000, the like sort of Y2K changeover into what we, into the digital revolution. Yeah. Yeah. And the different way in which we consume television changed yeah. kind of how we make what the television. Means, and what and television what means. means to yeah. us. Yeah. Seeing the, you know, I think WandaVision is a, one of the things WandaVision was so successful is because it takes a look at how the family TV sitcom portrays family to itself yes like the family sits down at dinner and then they watch their favorite tv shows that shows them 
on TV. Yeah. Supposedly. Yeah, and the, and the, the ultimate like meta commentary of this whole piece and WandaVision too, but it, it is it is essentially it's it's taking all of the old 80s and 90s tropes like it's taking these hold on um turn my phone off there it's taking these 80s 90s tropes of how how we portray family in sitcom or just tv shows in general how we portray yeah. human life human yeah. relationships it's holding it up and then it's putting it in a vitamix and just shredding it being like this oh, is yeah. not what exists this is you know when 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 art goes through uh when art transitioned into like impressionism, yeah. it's this huge shocking thing where you're like, actually you can break down an image even better than before to expressionism, to Dadaism, to po you know, postmodernism. Post this is like the most postmodern. It's so postmodern. Get. It is. It is like, here, take 90s television theme song, mm -hmm. disassemble it to its most basic elements, Uh huh. reassemble it, have fun. Yeah. So we've got, you know, a family. It's and it's the idea of an actor is seen on a screen, the actor's name uh -huh. in yellow title card, and it uh -huh. sort of pauses for a minute. And there's a mom and a dad and a kid and a you know a girl yep. and a boy and 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 then and it's the theme song too. Many cook. This is a super catchy. Even Jeffrey, you yeah. said you're like, what an earworm yes. this song is. And the. The basic setup of the Too Many Cooks sitcom yes. that exists here is that we're going to have the Too Many Cook. It takes a lot to make us do <laughs> when it comes to me and you. So we've got this like uh, family ties type of yeah. jingle. And the 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 basic idea is we're going to have an establishing shot of the house. We're going to start yep. the jingle. We're going to have each character pause them in their kind of like full archetype moment yes. of what they are. Happy I'm the dad. athlete. I'm the nerd. I'm yeah, the frustrated mom. mom. Yeah. Yeah. And and then at the end, we're all going to come together on the couch. Dad is going to set the camera on the oh timer, dive in, and then it's supposed to take the picture while he's like not quite fully set on the couch. Absolutely. Funny, that's the way you open the show. But it does every time end. it gets to that beat, it has to keep going. It just goes back to the refrain. Uh huh. And then there's a different kind of happy, happy family, white family, same house, <laughs> same house, but different dad, but like kind of you know not in the same clothes, but just of the same, but different types of people. And then eventually, I think the, I mean, that's the first moment you know things are funny. Like okay, repetition is funny. Yeah. But then it gets to two beats. Two. It adds two characters that are funny and upsetting because it gets to smarf smarf oh my the god janky ass looking l lanky cat thing yeah it's like yeah like like alf, like alf. It's, yeah it's very similar to alf but really it's 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 dark muppets it's yes. uh meet the feebles yes and then we get to the peeping tom guy oh my god so it's a guy with like in a window staring at a girl three feet away while he has binoculars on and and then it's and she's him naked. and, she, and, and she's, the nude girl and she's yeah she's just got her hands over her breasts uh-huh and of course she's given the like oh no what are you gonna do oh it no. just happens and then we <laughs> we have a whole bunch more montage throughout more and more, more characters, characters more every just nothing but character introduction and then there's a beat where you see the family one because it's a lot of action with like family doing things together. And yep. one of the beats I noted was the family is all playing Pictionary in the living room, oh, and the yeah. one drawing the picture up on the easel is the nude girl. So she's got yes, she's her still, left arm across. Yeah, she's her playing Pictionary the right like, in the same drawing because that's her character. That was the idea of stock characters. Uh huh. You know the weird next door neighbor who comes in and gives the thumbs up. Yep. Hot, but it's like taking that and stripping them of any humanity. So it's like, well, you're the girl who doesn't have a top on. So you're the girl who doesn't have a top on all the time. Yep. And then it gets to kind of like the high point of the song of like too many cooks okay, will spoil yeah. the broth, but they'll fill our hearts with so much, so much love. And then Smarf shooting rainbows out of his palms. Sure. <laughs> and you're like, great. We just 
really hit that button. Let's start the – nope. We're going to nope, start this cycle going. again. And then we get the like – and then it's the – The rotating camera? Yes. Yes. It's, uh -huh. the, it's the That 70s Show rotating camera, except it doesn't end. It does two full circles around it the table. It does two full circles, and there's like, you know, like – white teenager white teenager white and then and then it's like and then it goes around the room and now all of a sudden it's like a black family mm -hmm. goes through the entire you know kooky black family uh -huh. and then there's like a hot fireman dude with no shirt a, on no shirt on and then a hot fireman lady uh-huh no she's a hot cop because we're oh, gonna it. see her in this yes. trend yeah, it's a, just a cop lady. She has her shirt on. She's fully dressed. Yes. But the fireman is like full calendar fireman yep. outfit. And then <laughs> and then we get the G. Um, what is it? It goes to G.I. Joe, right? No, 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 no. No, it's it's the like. Bow, 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 bow. Now we're in a cop It's the procedural. cop show. Yeah, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, not G.I. Joe. Now we, because the cop woman is our transition to cop show yep. and they've added that bass guitar. Yep. That wah -wah Dick, uh, pedal. Was it Dick Wolf. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, sort of um, law and order, but even all, going all the way back to like chips, right? Yeah. Like seventies, eighties cop drama. Uh, there, I, I think there was also like well, Blues. There was cop drama. There's also an office drama. There's also an office comedy in there. There's a Falcon you know, Crest in there. Oh, oh, well, by the time we get to the, like, Falcon Crest Dallas yes. dynasty moment. Uh -huh. Okay, so here's our order. We go to our cop show, and this is where we get, you know, montage of all the cops. And it's the no. same song, but they've changed the orchestration ever so slightly. Yes. To, be to have a bit of an edge to it. Cop a bit drama. Of a law and order. Well, this is where we start getting more surreal because, like, at one point in time, there is a man hangs a coat on a little coat rack, and the camera zooms in and it pauses. There's a full face on this coat, yeah. and it just says Matthew Co Matthew Cody Foster as quote coat coat. And then there's this close up just on a pie sitting on this officer's desk, Lars von Trier as pie. Shut the front door. <laughs> because Lars we know Lars von, von Trier, Trier. loves. We know, but I mean, like, Lars von Trier is like, you know, the like one of the poster boys of like deconstruction postmodernism, yes. you know. But this cop sequence is the first moment we see our evil, our unnamed evil man. Yes. Because there's a cop on the phone, and as it pauses to say his name, up from behind, you just see this. There's just a guy with a beard. It's very, again, it's, it's very um, Bob from Twin yeah. Peaks. Yeah. But he's kind of got, like, he's got a big, wide smile, long, long, straggly hair, black yep. and white, or, you know, like, gray, graying beard. Yeah, he's very trollish. He's, yeah. I, I mean, I think, I think he's been in other scenes, like, in corners of shots. I've seen people break this down yeah, online. He'll just be, like, in the background as an extra. Yeah. But then he slowly starts edging into your focus of vision. This is the first beat where the, the filmmaker says, this man is here. Yes. And not only is he here, but he's suddenly in like every shot. Well, then but we go from- quite, He's not quite interacting with the characters yet. No, because now we go from cop. So we've gone from like family sitcom to cop yep. drama to G.I. Joe animation. That's it. And it, we get the musical switch and like the, the lyrics are now changing of like- uh. It, it's something like too many cooks will spoil the broth, but that's not the American way. Yeah, you know? it's very like it's very South Park. Yeah, Team America, World Police. But there's a scene of like that animated style of evil man marching with a machete. Yeah, in the middle of the shot. Then we cut to the giant mansion, and this is oh full God, on Dallas it. slash Falcon Dynasty. Crest. It's like a it's like a helicopter shot of a beautiful mansion. Mm -hmm. And then a shot of a falcon just turning its head. Yes. And then the same shot of the mansion and the same shot of the falcon and the and same added... shot of the mansion. Yeah. The same shot of the falcon, <laughs> the same shot of the mansion and the same shot of the falcon. And then it's like the theme, like, like the crest uh -huh. is a, is a chef's hat. Yes. A cook's hat that sort of like fades in and that video fade. And that, oh my God, it's so good. Now each character set up when we show the 
when we show the characters get uh you know on screen with their their name in yellow across the bottom each one gets murdered this time yes this because is... so we're in the, we're in fancy world which of course that was the thing about you know dynasty dallas or whatever it's just like who shot jr like all that just like people are gonna the ridiculous murders of these people mm -hmm. we definitely see it is creepy guy yeah and most of these murders are interesting because they are you know the freeze frame that happens on the character smiling at yeah, the screen yeah, yeah. it's the man coming up from behind and like it's as the knife is about to hit yes. the neck that it pauses then then we get to our first like true horror trope thing yeah. where like now we go to girls doing a pillow fight in a dorm sorority stuff, sorority yeah. house which is full on now we are in a a, a slasher movie yeah as opposed to a tv show because there was no tv show about sorority girls having pillow fights yeah. but um i get I, I don't know i guess we had different world like i don't remember pillow fights from different world but i guess we have sure. like college kid sitcoms whatever anyways these girls start getting picked off one by one in the credit sequence and the big one is katie atkins oh katie and her face freezes for the character beat but evil man is coming up from behind her and she, and he's moving but she's frozen but her eyes are moving to see him oh god so good it's so good and then she breaks away and she's running through a television set uh-huh but she maintains the katie atkins actor title uh -huh. credit throughout and she's running through this set and it's kind of empty, but there are still people backstage frozen, who frozen, who also have their title actor credits. Like there's like one dude who's just got like his head in the freezer, <laughs> standing with his head in the freezer, but he's got the little thing. There's one dude just standing backstage and another dude standing backstage and she would see her run through all this and she kind of pops into like a, a sitcom set of a girl's bedroom. Hides in the closet, a la Laurie Strode. Uh huh. Halloween. But her Creep. glowing, the glowing light of her name is shining through the slats of the closet door. Gives her away. And then this is where, when he opens the door, she he swings the thing, swings the machete down on her. We get a scream, and then blood splatter hits the bed, like hits the wall in bed. Now, um, what do we do with that? Well, we got to send in Wonder Woman. <laughs> I love there was just an era for about 10, 10 years there from like the mid aughts to the mid teens where we could not get enough of repetition humor. Oh yeah. Like Kristen Shaw is a horse. Like I think is the most famous case of this wherein just look up Kristen Shaw uh, is a horse online. And it is her old comedy bit of scream chanting. Kristen Shaw is a horse and then doing this ad nauseum yeah. over and over and then but what happens is is that you you get really frustrated with it but if you do it long enough yeah you start really enjoying it and this wonder woman doing the linda carter spin yep and but she's like it's like trying to like ignite it's like tr like trying to light a pilot light or try to turn over a car and it sh the wonder woman just won't take so she's like keep spinning and it kind of fades into Wonder Woman, but then fades back to the pretty lady in heels. Fades uh -huh. into Wonder Woman. But she finally does it. She finally sort of Wonder Woman's out, but she's like, you know, in a red superhero costume, immediately gets axed. Just knife to the face. Yes. Then there's the peeping Tom character who starts thinking I can spin he, into he something. And he spin. starts turning into like Green Lantern or something. And shit. he's got like a little green cape. But his head, but what I love about this, his head gets fully chopped off by creepy dude, but it's still transitioning uh -huh. into so like now his body is spinning as the the nerd, and his body is spinning as the headless superhero, and they kind of fall different sides and like the two spinning heads, one normal and one with like the domino superhero mask are now both independently rotating through the air. So good. The investigator comes to investigate the murder of these two people, immediately gets a machete to the head. Um, We start seeing the 
uh, montage again of the sitcom intro song, but this time the creepy man, the evil man is every character. So there's a scene where he yes. is the peeping Tom with the binoculars yeah. and he's shirtless holding his hand across his, his yep. boobs as the girl. But his title actor card is like, again, the video grain. There's mm -hmm. like a video, it's been videoed out and it like, it's that thing of like, when movies want to portray trying to read and sleep, where it's like the letters are constantly changing that like, we can identify them as letters, but we can't put them together as words. Yeah. But for every character. So he is not played by an actor is what no. the implication is. Yeah. He's also just cooking people's body parts. Oh yeah. And then the here the body parts come out. But then as he's sitting at the table, eating grinning and eating a foot, he just gets blowed up with lasers from yes. off camera and we cut over and we see Smarf who's got laser burning eyes, yeah. but then Smarf like bursts into flame. And what's left is yeah. like a Terminator style robot in the shape of Smarf. And now we're in fucking space. Cook cybernetic operational oh. optimized Knights of science, defending humanity from broth beast rebels of the hellscape. Oh my god. God damn it. Absolutely. And this is some of the, like the most janky Star <laughs> Trek. The costumes original in original this... Doctor Who, not this newfangled super oh, cute yes. Doctor Who, like old, like we're going to, you know, like what they used to say about like Star Trek, like we're going to like staple a paper plate onto somebody's head and be like, "Oh, your paper plate alien species." It's like 11 p.m. PBS Doctor Who. Yes. 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 These costumes here are so fucking brilliant. Fucking good. The makeup and everything is so awesome. And it's the the, the voiceovers Same like thing. when it when it comes to the future, you can never have too many cooks. But he's like this the evil man is also like he's like a a, a drone type character. There's multi of him yes. marching with the machete. He's the face of a spaceship shooting lasers, lasers out of his, his mouth. mouth. Sure. Okay. Now we cut back to sci fi. Our... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, on the screen of the spaceship is the is house, the sitcom. the sitcom house. And so then we just go into that. And inside the house is actually not the living room, it's, a, it's a, like an OR or an ICU. Yeah. Actually, it's... it's an ICU. And it's a, two doctors standing over this man who is just mutter muttering. Beats from a sitcom screenplay. Pause yeah. for audience laughter. He trips over his own thing. She says this, and then the audience laughs. And, then and the he's got and he's got his yellow actor title card. Mm -hmm. And we have a very naturalistic acting between these two doctors. Very anti every, you know, like extremely realistic. Well, extremely, but yeah, you know, but much more realism. Played as na normal people who were like yes. not supposed to be in this world. And the male doctor says. This is the worst case of intronitis I have ever seen. It took me a second to process intronitis, but it's intro nitis. Nitis. Yeah. yeah. And she's, he's like, you can even hear the theme music coming from him. And she says, and we have no idea how contagious this strain is. And then her face falls. Uh huh. And she looks at the doctor. And sliding up his side is a care is is a two is a two name name uh huh and you see his <laughs> he goes full into like this is uh this is like zombie type movie right when a yes. person realizes they're infected yeah. and yeah. he's like kill kill me kill me kill me and he's smiling because you have yeah, to smile like the, in the it's like the Joker smile move. like it's like it's like the joyless smile the sitcom uh -huh. smile. Or the Disney smile, as my friend said. Yeah. The thing I love so much, I'm just going to throw this in about too many cooks that I, I always admired about it and any kind of postmodern y bullshit that does this type of montage, this type of horror montage, is that it really just gets to the heart of it. It really does play with when we watch television, mm -hmm. <laughs> this. It's hard to become aware of the soullessness of it. Right. It's hard to become aware of like the deepest, darkest parts of our own humanity. 
not just of the world, but of ourselves, yeah. because it doesn't allow you well-produced television, which is what the 80s and 90s were. Even the worst TV show was polished to perfection. Oh, sure. And so when you take this, when you polish something up to where there's nothing left to really break down, we could not do, it'd be so hard to do an analysis of family ties or whatever. Yeah. Um, because it is, it has been so spit polished. And here's a, a short horror satire showing us the, you need to like, it's the call of the void. You need to see the evil within. Well, my theory about too many shorts, too many too cooks, many shorts. <laughs> too many shorts, too many shorts, too many shorts, is that this unnamed psycho killer, this is happening inside his head. Uh-huh. When he watches to like while he's watching TV, he is putting himself into this, these television scenarios and yeah. eventually that fabric between what's on television and reality start to gray in his mind. Yeah. It's very uh un, un uh unedited footage of a bear follows yep. a kind of similar t um uh intensity uh yes. because it 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 starts simple and it trumpets out to where the insanity layers on itself and by the end it is such a loud jumble of things happening yeah. that it's um it's hard to fully grasp but it's full crescendo yeah all the way and through similar to unedited footage of a bear home invasion help yeah the idea of taking something that is um a training video uh -huh. this is a, a sitcom introduction theme song yeah and then Within that little terrarium, those things become sentient uh -huh. and start expanding beyond the boundaries that we know a sitcom theme song should last. It's my favorite thing as a writer to do, especially for joke telling, but this works great in horror too, which is why I think gravitated towards wanting to make Night Vale because yeah. it does have that humor and horror, horror, but it's take a trope, move it forward, turn it left. Move it yeah, forward, yeah, yeah. turn it left, move it forward, turn just keep turning and yeah. see what happens uh with your logic. And it's that's what's happening here. And eventually we get to the point where we are running through the theme song again, running through all of these like setups of dynasty and cop drama and family sitcom, but all of the characters are fully jumbled now. So we have like the space dinosaur from Yes. K O uh, C O O K S who who's in like the girl's dorm with the pillow yep. fight. Yep. There's a grandmother firing a laser gun inside the kitchen. Yep. And then ultimately it gets to the characters are now just made out of the font. Yes. Oh my God. That's the weird, like where they're like, okay, so now it's font people. And then human, like video of human actors lying sideways uh -huh. where the font, where the character name or the actor name should be. And that yeah. are just screaming at the camera. Yeah. As in like, what absurd hell am I in? You know, the thing about like formulaic filmmaking or formulaic TV show making is, is that it is formulaic. It's a spreadsheet. It is a database of tropes, of stereotypes, yeah. of archetypes that you just Put into the blender. You, you don't even put it to the blender. You just draw a few out, and you're like, "Here's our TV sitcom. Yeah. We're making we have Blossom our very now. special. We have our yeah. very special episode. Mm -hmm. We have the you know the, the run through. You you all know the TV tropes. And when you have that type of database mentality of how to make a thing, yeah, what happens sometimes is the computer can short out. The computer mm -hmm. can mix up your data. If you've ever worked with Excel spreadsheets, you know sometimes. You did something as simple as just deleting a row and you don't realize every calculation below yeah. that is fucked. Yeah. And that's and what, what is happening here. What is beautiful the, patterns it can make. True. When it's not doing what it's supposed to do. And that's what's happened here is the formulaic, the uh the formulaic structure of the sitcom has broken down. Dino uh, dinosaur space alien somehow wound up in the same line on Excel as college sorority girl pillow yeah. fight but then we see smarf oh smarf and we don't know exactly what happened probably got attacked by evil man but smarf but kind is of, it's similar bleeding. to the scene in slut 
Uh-huh. Where we see Smarf bloodied crawling across the floor. Uh-huh. While the haunting refrain, it's now kind of in the background and faded, but very dark minor, minor chords. Key of just like, and it's that echo, like somebody singing in quietly, but in a church or something. He's like, too many cooks, too many cooks. And then he sees, Smarf sees the red button at the floorboard of the kitchen. And just like a panic button. Yeah, a panic. Do not press the panic button. But he reaches over and he presses it and dies. And we see the overhead shot of just dead Smarf in a pool of his own blood on a linoleum floor. White out. Then the Brady Bunch style grid yes. that keeps ever expanding, ever yes. expanding of every single fucking character. And then we finally wrap it up with a living room. Here it is in the background of my screen on YouTube here. But the we get the living room filled with not all of those characters, but a fucking lot of them. Yeah. And dad finally gets the picture set. Gets to his seat. Flash camera picture taken. But when the flash effect disappears, Cecil, it is our creepy man instead of father. Oh. And then the maybe the funniest button I've seen on a short film, which is the show finally starts. Yes. Eleven minutes oh after an yeah, intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, you know, sitcom laughter. Somebody walks in and says, I've got cut. Yeah. Honey, I'm home to be continued. <laughs> to be continued. And then it's like the super fast rolling of credits. You know what yeah. they would do when like you know, when shit was syndicated and they had to yes. get through all the names legally, but there's no human way that anyone could read those names. Right. Unbelievable. I I just have such a soft spot for this and unedited footage of a bear, the stuff that Adult Swim was doing. Um, it, it still is doing, but I love this type of montage filmmaking. I love postmodernism. It's so mm -hmm. fucking fun. What a, what a blast. What a blast. We did it. Hopefully, so maybe some of these uh, horror shorts will inspire you for your Halloween costumes. Oh, yes. I want to go as Smarf with blood spurting out the side of his neck. Bloody Smarf? Yeah. Bloody Smarf. <laughs> damn it, I have to add that to the band names list. <laughs> uh, well, we don't, we're not rolling for another movie because this no. is just a bonus Halloween episode. So listen, thank you all for listening. Thank you, Cecil, for talking with me. We'll be back on Tuesday with another regular episode. I cannot tell you that film yet because we're recording this a little ahead of time. But have a restful Halloween with no one spoiling your broth. Nothing. Boo.